Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to Propaganda Watch. I'm your host, James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. Now, we all remember from our history textbooks that Marie Antoinette, the last queen of the French, infamously remarked during the French Revolution in the throes of a peasant uprising over a lack of bread to eat, let them eat cake, right? Well, as it turns out, like pretty much everything else you learned in your history textbooks, that too is a lie. In fact, doubly so. First of all, because she did not say let them eat cake, but literally let them eat brioche, which is a different thing entirely. But more to the point, actually, there's no evidence whatsoever that she actually said that. Uh, this was originally started as some sort of thing that was vaguely attributed to the, some French royalty, some French princess at some point in the past century or two, and it only actually got affixed to Marie Antoinette 50 years after the fa fact by uh, pro-revolutionary historians. So take it for what it's worth. And I think we can all understand how, you no, know, we cannot be expected to believe that any would-be misleader of the people could be so divorced from reality, so ensconced in her own privilege that she would be as tone deaf as to say something like, let them eat cake to starving peasants, right? Right? Uh, Speaker Pelosi, what have you found? What are you going to share with us from your home? Chocolate. Really? Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate candy. Oh, wow. And this is, this is something you can get through the mail. Okay. You can run out. Can I show, show you? Me. Yeah, absolutely. This is the episode of Cribs I never knew I needed. Oh, my God. Wow. Other people in our family go for some other flavors, but chocolate, and then we have some other chocolate here. <laughs> See, yeah, I've always there. felt a connection with you, and now I understand why. Oh, right. That's exactly what just happened. Yes, what you have just seen, of course, is part of the new sheltering in place, social distancing late night TV comedy, I guess, or the, its equivalent in this coronavirus age, of course, with the risible uh, James Corden hosting Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, about, oh, what are you doing to cope with these trying times? Well, let me show you my $24,000 fridge stocked with $13 pints of ice cream. And let me show you how I'm coping with this. Oh, chocolate. Oh, aren't I so relatable to those masses? You know, people like chocolate and stuff. This'll, this'll go over very well, won't it? <laughs> yeah, no, of course not. And you can find out more information about this uh, from any number of places online. I'll throw in a link to uh, bizpackreview.com. Nancy Pelosi brags about stockpile of $13 per pint ice cream in $24,000 fridge as Americans line food banks showing how millionaire Nancy Pelosi showed how tone-deaf and arrogant she is by flaunting her dessert stockpile in her $24,000 refrigerator while millions of unemployed Americans line up at food banks amid the coronavirus sh shutdowns, uh, pointing out that as some people have uh, done the due diligence and found the exact fridge-freezer pair that she has in the background there, it's a $24,000 setup that she has there to stock her trays of $13 per pint ice cream, uh, and this is what's getting her through these troubling times. Meanwhile, in reality... Before sunrise, hundreds had already lined up in front of San Antonio's Alamo Dome, each car representing the economic impact of the vicious pandemic gripping the nation and the families now facing an uncertain future. Beatrice Ortiz was the first in line. There's a lot of people hurting out here. You know, a lot of people, even in my, in, within my family. Soon, under the morning sun, the enormity of a critical need would be made clear. Cars, bumper to bumper, people desperate to feed their families. Matthew Serna, among the 2,000 people who came to this food distribution site, laid off from his job soon after the shutdown began. Nobody likes it when your kids ask what's for dinner and you're not sure what to tell them. It's not easy to ask for help. And we try to provide for our own family. Food banks across the country are seeing huge demand. This moving scene at a grocery store in Maryland. And long lines like this one in New York forming outside of this food bank. Oh, what? The, the peasants are having some sort of problem getting food? Well, just let them eat ice cream. Yes, it's absolutely unfathomable that some politician 
who one would expect is a servant of the people, right, is not only flaunting their wealth in the public's face, but so oblivious to that inherent privilege that they are flaunting that they would think that it is a good idea to go on some entertainment show and relate to the people by, oh, I'm I'm just engorging myself with this chocolate ice cream. Oh, I know, so naughty. <laughs> from their $24,000 fridge with their $13 pints of ice cream, while people, for the first, many people for the first time in their lives, finding themselves unemployed and taking food from the food bank. It's unfathomable that anyone could be that out of touch with reality, but as we are finding out in this crazy time, there are many people who are that detached from reality, like, speaking of detached from reality, Joe Biden, the uh, Weekend at Bernie's candidate for 2020, uh, tweeting in response to Speaker Pelosi's freezer, well, you have great taste at Speaker Pelosi, as if that is, again, the type of thing that uh, Joe Biden wants to be associating his campaign with at this point. Not that this is a political thing per se, but it is, it, it again, speaks to an utter obliviousness to the situation that many people are facing. And I have no doubt that you have seen any number of hot takes by any number of people along these lines in the preceding weeks and months, uh, and we'll see many, many more as this continues to, to unfold. And perhaps no more contemptible example can I find than the hot take by comedian Patton Oswalt, who tweeted out, Anne Frank spent two years hiding in an attic, and we've been home for just over a month with Netflix, food delivery, and video games. And there are people risking viral death by storming state capitol buildings and screaming, Open Fuddruckers! Again, again, the absolute obliviousness of people like this who are millionaires who probably don't have to work another day in their life because they could wall themselves up in their palatial home uh, streaming Netflix and eating food delivery uh, for the rest of their lives. Well, guess what? There are people out there who can't do that. The people you pretend normally to care about, the poorest people in the U.S. and elsewhere who are feeling the first effects of this economic depression that we are slipping into, and you are making fun of them for caring about the fact that their entire life savings, their entire livelihoods, their way of life has been taken out from underneath them, and they're a little bit upset about this and the fact that they're lining up at food banks and finding themselves on the unemployment rolls. Oh, why are you whining? You just want to open Fuddruckers. So oh, you, you silly peasants, you simpletons. Let them eat cake. Let them eat ice cream. Again, the, the tone deafness of this is just off the charts. But if I suppose if anything good can come out of the times that we find ourselves living in, it is not only the, the ultimate demystification of celebrity um, that has taken place in the era of social media when we get occasionally to see behind the PR veil that these uh, celebrities raise around themselves, but actually to see what they are like underneath and how they actually respond to people uh, in their social media feeds. But now we are seeing all these absolutely oblivious celebrities as if they matter at all to the average working person who is literally struggling to put food on their family's table. Now, oh, well, we're all in this together, says Madonna in her bath bathtub, surrounded by rose petals in her million, multi-million dollar estate. We're all in this together. The virus has made us all equal. Now I'll get some of my underlings to go fetch me some more food. Uh, absolutely just ridiculous. But it, if anything, I, I, I think this really could be the end of the era of celebrity that accompanied the rise of mass media of the 20th century. Perhaps this is truly the last nails in those coffin, and uh, in that coffin, and let's hope it is so, because it could not come too soon. Um, but think about this. Think about all of the, the pieces of information that are embedded in something like Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi giving you a little peek into her multi-million dollar mansion where she s scoops up $13 pints of ice cream from her $24,000 freezer and uh, wonders why the peasants are so angry about what's going on. It's ridiculous. And <laughs> I guess it's a good thing that Marie Antoinette didn't live in the age of social media so that 
her let them eat cake or whatever she did or didn't say during the French Revolution couldn't be recorded for all posterity. But here we are, and here it is being recorded. So let's note these things as they're happening. On that note, I would invite people in the Corporate Report community who have noticed similar pronouncements by the cozy uh, elites ensconced in their mansions, whining about how the poor peasants are out there demonstrating to open Fuddruckers or something along those lines. Let's make note of that in the comment section of this video. Let's just keep a record of some of these statements for posterity's sake, because I think it's good to keep this on file. On that note, we're going to end things for today. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, talking to you again very soon.